Good morning, do it yourself. Yes, I know why you are here, why you're watching this movie here, I mean, this uh, video, because you want to save some money, right? I'm going to show you today how to save some money. And changing transmission fluid. This video is about that today. We're going to be changing the transmission fluid on this cross track. I will show you in one second, 2019. I know it's too early to change it, but I'm going to show you how to do it when the time comes. It's the same process, any Subaru 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, same process, be it uh, Impreza, Outback, Forester, Crosstrek, you do it the same way. It's kind of scary, but don't be scared, it's very, very easy. Whatever I will show you, follow every process to the letter, please. Work in a very clean environment because changing your transmission fluid, some people say don't change it, others said change it. There is a lot of talking around it and nobody, not even the manufacturer can tell you the truth about it because they themselves don't know. But follow your gut, follow your gut, change your transmission fluid because nothing is lifetime except, except God himself, nothing is lifetime there is contaminant and this transmission it's uh they call it a seal transmission system why is it sealed because there is no dipstick to check your fluid level to check uh, the quality of your fluid so that's why they call it sealing seal transmission but since there is a drain plug there is a fill plug then it's drainable it's fillable it's serviceable we're gonna do it today, I will show you. This car is less than one year old. I've already changed it as soon as the braking period finished last year. Yes, I don't trust this manufacturer. I put my own arms oil in there because I trust arms oil a lot, they never fail me. I don't work for them. They don't give me a dime, but I like the product. I'm a consumer like you. Yes, so, it's feelable, it's drainable. We will do it today. I will show you. Please be clean. Be clean. We don't want any contaminants going there. Any fluid should be changed. I learned it the hard time 25 years ago. I had a Subaru. My first car was a Subaru Impreza, made in uh, 1984. I bought it in 1993 uh, or 94. Yes was I bought it for $1,000 there was already 120,000 miles on it so when I bought it I used it to deliver pizza full time it was a very good car very reliable one day I said okay let me change my transmission fluid I took it to my mechanic mm -hmm. to get it uh, changed I didn't flush it so the mechanic changed it it was uh, there was I believe 170,000 miles on it so the next morning, my, transmis my transmission started slipping. It won't change gear. I had to tow it to the mechanic. So that Subaru was gone. So I really learned it in a hard way. Should you change your transmission fluid or should you not? It depends. If you never change it, I will say, leave it alone. If there is already 100 and above thousand miles on it, leave it alone don't mess with it but if it, your car is new you got less than one thousand uh, a hundred thousand mile or whatever you can drain it you can flush it because there's a difference i always drain myself at my 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 cars transmission fluid i always drain them two years interval every two years i drain and put the new one if you never drain it well flush it but it comes with the risk right so today we're gonna be working on this one i'm gonna show you what tools you need please and i'm along the movie i will show you some tips how do you know when it's full and uh, do we need to level this car no but word of advice whatever amount 
that we're going to be taking out of the transmission, we have to put the same amount back. Don't overfill, don't underfill it. Please, don't, miss this, don't mix this transmission we're going to be taking out with some other used oil you have. Use clean cash pen, I'm going to show you. We don't add it to any other used flow because we're going to measure it, how, many, how much we took out. Please, I'm doing my part, do your part, so you don't, we don't have to blame each other. Are we clear on that? Good. So, we're going to be changing it. Should you change it? It's up to you. I follow my gut. Subaru said every thousand, every hundred thousand kilometers to change it. Then it's changeable. But some people said it's lifetime. If it's lifetime, if when you go to dealer, you will see a board, the price board, they even put transmission, flash, whatever, 300 something plus some programming, they said $100, so $500 Canadian. That's it's safe to take to, to change the transmission flow. So it's not the lifetime. Since there's a drain plug, there is a fill plug, it is not a lifetime, but you don't fool yourself. Don't let anybody fool you. Yeah, nothing is lifetime. Because there is varnish formation, there is a conta contamination in there, internal contamination caused by heat. So don't fool yourself, man. And always change your transmission fluid before the manufacturer recommendation. Like on this one, they said 100,000 kilometers, which, uh, which is equivalent to 62,000 miles. So I would say change it 50,000 kilometers, change it. In that case, you are adding good fluid onto the top of the good fluid. But if you wait until it's bad and you put the good one in there, you are likely to ruin your transmission and the quality of oil in your transmission and your torque converter are already bad. So always change your transmission, your, your fluid earlier. Be it oil, be it uh, differential, rear differential, front, front differential, axle, whatever it is. Transmission, change it earlier, don't wait. And some people, they are so stingy, excuse me, or no time, or they are careless, they will wait until the manufacturer recommendation change of fluid pass and later on they're gonna go and try to change it you already caused the damage fluid cannot repair any clutch any gear uh, worn out inside there they cannot take care of your car you you spend a lot of money on it so Subaru said don't touch it because they want your money I believe on fixing stuff you, we gotta be able to fix it. Any manufacturer now, Apple, computer, window, Subaru, Toyota, whatever, they all want you to take your stuff to them so they can rip you off. That's why they are building stuff so it's not, it's, 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 it's almost not repairable. But we are here, since human beings have done it, those engineers are there, human beings like you and I, of course, there is some way to get into the system and fix this car. That's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be draining it. So, uh, when you go to your Subaru um, owner manuals, they will set it at uh, the transmission here on this Crosstrek 2019 will take 10.7 uh, liter. But I believe we won't be able to get more than 6 liter out of this Crosstrek. Right? So since I'm changing my transmission every two years, I'm good. I'm taking the garnish and, and, uh, and, the, and the guns and whatever, you name it out. Uh, uh, metal shaving, anything. Some people also ask, is it, uh, you are mixing uh, arms oil with stock? Are they compatible? Oh yeah, big time. This is not my first car. I own uh, Toyota, I own Nissan, I own, I own Ford. I always mix stock with arms oil, very compatible with any, anything. As I told you earlier, I changed already this uh, transmission fluid. I know what I'm doing here. 
a year ago I put Amzol. So there is half stock, half Amzol in this transmission already. For one year I've been driving, my transmission worked like the charm, man. No problem whatsoever. So they are compatible, no problem. Now, no further delay. We're gonna dive into everything here. I will show you first what you need, tools you need, precaution you have to take. We don't want any external uh, contamination. That's why Subaru doesn't want you to touch the transmission because some people, when they work, it's messy, it's dirty. You gotta be clean if you wanna do your transmission fluid change, right? Okay, as you can see on the board here, transmission, this is uh, what tool you need. This is a drain, 8 millimeter for the drain, sorry, and 10 millimeter for the fill, right there. And now when we finish, when we are talking, the fill plug will be a 37 foot pound, and the drain will be 29 foot pound. Okay, these are the tools we're going to be needing today to do the transmission work. I'm gonna go one by one on each of one and explain to you. Yeah, this is a socket. I was explaining to you on the board there, which is a uh, 10 millimeter. This is a torque bead, which is a uh, eight millimeter. I hope you can see on it. Yeah, eight millimeter. This one, Kel Allen key. It also eight millimeter. So in case you use this Allen key, you you use some leverage to open and you can open it. So. We will use this, the socket one, right? And this has a wrench. We're gonna be putting all this thing in there to do it. Okay, this has a, uh, a funnel. As you can see, I clean it completely. Everything is clean with a uh, brick, uh, brick fruit. It's all clean. And this is a syringe. When the time comes, I will show you what we need this for, okay? You, we may not need it, but it's, it's uh, gonna be good to to get it handy ready okay so two cash pan here as you can see uh, this is uh, this gonna be containing the all the used oil and this one gonna be like when we are working when we are filling up whatever dripping we're gonna catch it and put it back in there it's all clean right they're all clean I clean it before I even come to the video here yeah and also I'm gonna keep this one handy and, uh, and the beaker, because we're gonna be measuring how many gallons we took out, right? So 32 ounce equal one liter. So we're gonna be measuring. And this is, uh, I got six of this uh, Amzai oil, uh, seed CVT, continuously variable transmission. Yeah, very compatible with my cross rack. Right there, I got six of them, because I know you won't take more than six quarts. In case uh, I have a, uh, the light one here in case it's too dark underneath there okay and some gloves and towel okay fellas I almost forgot uh, to show you the pump we're gonna be needing yeah this is a pump here it uh, also half inch internal diameter tubing here right and we just buy the clump and put it in there. Initially, when you buy uh, the new one, uh, it comes with uh, tubing, but that's really small. So you gotta get this clump here, tight it in there. So this uh, tubing will fit perfectly in there. I clean it too. This is exactly the same tubing I have, but as you can see, it's really small. Yeah you gotta buy a half inch internal diameter to it come this way but you buy this clump and tight it in there and you're good the length it's up to you yeah we'll say a good uh half meter we will we'll do it we got a brand new here the same pump i already forwarding and lift the car up lift it at very high right so you can uh, work underneath easy. Easy, I got everything ready. Yeah, we're gonna go underneath and from there we go. Okay, my friends, we're underneath the cross track here. So this will be the transmission pan. We're gonna open it 
with our uh, 10 millimeter socket and right on top of that this is a field plug right here so on the uh, outback as you can see uh, the pipe the muffler pipe it um, on the outback the muffler pipe would be here and the transmission field would be on the left side there so this is the front we're looking at the front here when you go by American and Canadian standard okay uh, above this one there's passenger on the left side there there is driver okay so here it is I'm gonna set the camera down and open it and see what we can do this is a drain here and this is a field right here so the good sense would like you to open uh, the uh, field first in case you can get uh, the drain open but in this case I really recommend opening the drain first because if we open the field you're gonna see a lot of fluid coming down here I'm gonna start with the field to show you what I'm talking about let me try with this Allen key 8 millimeter first Let's see if I can get it open so the engine is off so as you know when you are opening you go left so we're gonna be turning left okay this is gonna be tough I need uh, this is really uh, tight I'm gonna try to use uh, the other one the socket one with, uh, so I can get some leverage Yeah, this um, this is use. I'm using this as a breaker bar here. I hope you can see. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Easy. So, gotta crack it open. That was easy. So as I as I said. If uh, there's gonna be a lot of fruit coming up, so be ready to 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 capture. We don't want to lose anything here. See. Yep, it's greenish. So this is a field first that I got open. There's a lot of fruit coming down, as you can see, right on the video here. So that's why that's what I was talking about. So if it wasn't for the sake of the video, I will just starting with uh, drain first to get it drained from here before I even get uh, to open the field one, right? So it's very clean. As I said, there is al already 50% arms oil in there and 50% stock. Because last time I couldn't get all the stock out. Now I'm gonna do it again. Right? Every two years I change. It hasn't been two years, but for the sake of making a new video, that's why. And while it's coming down, there is a washer in there. Last time I haven't replaced it, but it's up to you. It's up to you. And this time I'm not gonna replace it either. But after next next one, uh, I have a new one here, but I won't use it. I will still use the old one. It's up to you though. If you wanna replace it, go for it. But after I finish uh, tidying up everything, every two days I will check for one week to see if there is any leak. As soon as I construct the leak, I will just. Uh, replace it but it's gonna be a lot, another hard work to replace it because you're gonna open it pump back in there so but I will use it again next time up 
next uh, time doing it for the third time then I will replace it every tw every two time I, I replace it it's up to you okay now I'm just gonna this is just was about to show you yeah what's gonna happen if you open the drain first but now I'm gonna close it for now so I can get uh, the drain open Okay, push it out of the way a little bit. And now I'm gonna use for the drain, I'm gonna use a 14 millimeter, or if you wanna use SIE, that's 9 over 16. I have a Tight, huh? Wow, we got it open already. So more's gonna be coming also from the drain. So be also ready for it with your cash pen because we don't want to lose anything. Here we go. There's more coming down here. There's also the gasket there. Should I replace it? Mm. I have a spare one here. Yeah, I'll replace that one. Just like our, our, our uh, drain plug there. Yeah, very similar. But this is not oil. As you see, it's a green. So oil is kind of a yellow, whatever. So, now I can get open this uh, fill plug to get some circulation going. So keep it, keep both in a safe, really safe place. I just remove uh, this uh, washer from the drain plug, so it's exactly whatever you use for your oil all drain plug the washer yeah so the washer i don't know if you can see but the bottom side is is a uh, larger wider than the top side so the bottom side which is larger go going there first as i'm doing it right now okay there we go i got a new washer there it's exactly your oil drain washer same thing man that's it okay I guess finish draining now. I'm just gonna close it now and we go from there. Okay, word of advice before you use the top wrench, tidy it up a little bit. Okay? When you tight, you go clockwise. Don't forget. Now, I'm gonna use the torque wrench, a 29 foot pound of torque. I already set uh, my torque wrench already. It's already on 29. Oh. Yep. Let's see again to make sure. Yep, 29. Now we're done with draining. 
Next step, we will go and measure whatever amount we got out. Here we go again. I have managed to get this amount out. It's a lot. It's really a lot. Now we're gonna measure. The beacon is here. And we're gonna see how many cord we need to put back. We grab a tower here. This is one quart. I put that one here so I won't lose count. But whatever you do, you don't want to lose count. And pour it here. Don't mix it with anything yet. We haven't done it yet. In case you look count, you can recount it, right? Second one, right? I put it here. Five quarts so far. One, two, three, four, five. And I got a little bit remaining. Let's see how much. some metal shaving there you see I don't know if you can see what's there Okay, I guess that enough. So we got five quart and hundred millimeter out. We're gonna put the exact amount back in there. I put six. Last time I changed my CVT, there was a remaining here, so I will complete it. This uh, there's one quart left. I will keep it for next time when I'm gonna change my outback transmission fluid. We are back underneath here. As you can see, I changed uh, the catch pane here. This is a new one, the little one. The big one, it's already contaminated with all this metal shaving I show you. So this is a new one. Whatever is gonna be dripping, we catch it and try to put it back in there. It's a clean one. So, let's get to it. And the remaining 100 milliliter, I already, out of the camera, I already put it I open this new one and try to put it in there, right? So, 
Let's insert our pump. Okay, I gotta tell you something here. We're gonna we're gonna pump this uh, quart quart in there now, but we will come to a point where it will refuse to take any more. Maybe after three quart or fourth quart, it will refuse to take more. Then we have to go inside the car, turn it on, put it to drive, neutral, reverse. And then come back here with the engine on and try to put the remaining back in there. That's what's going to happen. You will see. Okay. This one is ready, even though I don't need it right now, but we may need it later. So clean the tip of this. No contamination whatsoever. So as you can see, yeah, this one fit perfect. It won't come down on you. All right, this one, this is what I use for different differential fill and uh, real dif front differential and real differential, you see? So, we'll start pumping now. I will forward it because it will take some time to finish pumping. Okay, one quart is out. I'll replace it. There is still remaining 100 milliliter in there, kind of 100 milliliter. Okay, so notice here on the top here, there's a liquid here. And there's transparency here. That means we can put more. When you come to a point where it all filled with liquid, that means this inside is already full. Right, you see? You see? From here to here, there is transparent tubing here, no liquid. So don't forget that one. We can put one more in there, and maybe another one, I guess. So, We got a little bit left here. Let me show you. So I will come back to it. Put it out of range, You're out of reach here so you won't tip on it and make a mess. Okay, keep pumping. There we go, second quart. And let's see, one more quart here. I'm gonna use a new one to continue. As you can see the transparency here on the tubing. There's a liquid here, but nothing coming down. That means we can put more. Not the tip, you gotta learn here. You gotta mind, you gotta be mindful of it. But I don't think we can put all this in there. So there's another one, 100 millimeter left here. I put it on the side for now. And I'm gonna start my pumping. So if you want, we can test it. If I remove now, there is nothing gonna come, but nothing will be coming out of it. See? Nothing. That means I can put some more in there. So let's go. Okay. Third quart. Quart three. Okay, let's see if I can put some more in there. Just be mindful of this part. Yeah, let's watch it cl closely. If it doesn't become transparent, that means it's full. We have to go up there. It's becoming transparent again. 
so we can still put a little more in there. That's a nice trick, right? So not all mechanic will tell you that, you see? Yep, we can put more in there. I still have another 100 millimeter here. Put it on the side. So you see, if I take the, the, the tubing out, there we go, see? So I'll put it in there, so we can keep on pumping the fourth quart in there. Yep. We good, we good, man, we good. This part is an indication to show you if it's full or not. So mind you. Not everybody will tell you that. Or maybe they don't know about it. Okay, let's wait a little bit and see. I have the feeling that it's full now. You see? You see the top? Oh God. It's full, I guess. Yeah, it's full. Now, as you can see now, it's full. There's no a little bit of transparency, but as soon as I pull out this uh, uh, tubing, you will see it will start dripping. Okay, then have your cash pen ready because we don't want to lose any. I know it's going to start dripping now, right? So let me take this one out. It's full. There we go. You see? That's what, that's what I'm talking about. You see, what are we gonna do? We got 0 0.3 quart in here. We got 0 0.4 quart waiting there. And we got this one left, a full quart. What are we gonna do, man? We are doomed. We are lost. Oh no, don't fret, man, don't fret. Now is the time to, to uh, let it drip a little bit. This is the time to go turn the engine on, warm up the car a little bit. Some people have this sophisticated machine, whatever, uh, thermal gun or whatever they call it. Let it drain. So whatever coming down in the cash pan here, we're gonna recover it. We need it. That's why you have to be clean doing this job. Trust me. So I could have stopped earlier to avoid this mess, but I just wanted to show you what's gonna happen. That's why I continue, right? So when you put already three quart, just close it as I'm gonna be closing now. Go up there, turn your engine on, cover your brake, be safe. Okay, what is a plug here? I wanna try to close it now. Just hand, hand tight it. Yeah, just hand tight. That's about it. Right? Okay, we're gonna go up. We're gonna go inside the car, turn it on, and play with the gear a little bit and come back to it. Okay, we go inside the car here. Be safe, okay? Cover the brake. Parking brake on. Car on park. Start the car. Always cover your brake. So while we are here, there is a 10,400 kilometer divided by 1.6, you will find it in mile, how much 
so five six little less than six thousand mile yeah this is a beautiful car yeah as you see the gas consumption since i put long life i'm getting six points sometimes 6.5 6.6 yeah very good mileage it used to be seven point something i ch i went from long uh severe gear to long life okay now let's see you go back and forth cover your brake rear neutral drive back again neutral rear park again drive neutral rear park and now we go out there underneath you leave the car running and park don't turn it off otherwise all this transmission gonna drip down to the transmission pane there and uh, we're gonna do it all over again just leave the car running okay we are back here please don't burn yourself there is a hot muffler pipe beside you here on the left hand side so we will open it There we go. Nothing coming down anymore. We stick it in there and continue pop popping. Last time out of from outside the video, I poured the, uh, the 300 millimeter remaining on the other bottle. So I'm gonna put that one here now. <laughs> oh. Oh. I burn myself. Watch out, I just burn myself. Huh? The pipe is very hot. Don't touch the pipe. Okay. Whatever you do, don't touch the pipe. It's so hot. So we got one quart left here. Only one quart left so far. So. As you can see the pipe, even if I remove it now, there is nothing coming down. You see? The engine is on, it's sucking all this fluid. Whatever you do, don't turn off the engine, otherwise you're gonna create a big mess. This is the last bottle.
There we go. Now, what I'm left here. You see, when I was uh, putting in there, I, I some was dripping, so I'm gonna try to put them here. This is when this one coming. gonna pump up to down to one and a half that's the last one whatever was pouring down into cash pen I put it in there ready here we're gonna be removing this thing quickly as soon as you remove it you put the plug in there otherwise it's gonna be going down like crazy okay oh be ready with the plug. As soon as you remove uh, these rings, you put the plug back in the back. Don't burn yourself. There we go. That's how you do. We're done. I lost a little bit here, I don't know, 10, 10 5 milliliter, I lost that one here, but since I add a little, little more, a little bit more, so we are good, yeah, that's it, it's done. I'm gonna go now turn the engine off and torque it. Now we will torque it. The torque spec is uh, 37 foot pound. Always watch out, the muffler is really hot. I got burned twice already. It's no fun, man. Oh, I wanna make sure my head, my arm touched it. Oh, man. Terrible. There we go. Yep, we're done. So the last part was really tricky here. Yeah. As soon as you remove uh, the last one, I guess it's a little bit full, but what you do, be ready. As soon as you pump everything in there, whatever you, you lost in the cash pan, measure it and uh, Put it back in there, and as soon as you get there, remove the piping quickly and close it. You will lose maybe five milliliter, and that's it. But you compensate by putting that one already in there. Okay, thank you for watching, and that's it. See you in about two more years when we're gonna do the next change. Uh, if you like it, uh, yeah, give me a thumbs up. I oh, really appreciate it. Okay, bye bye. We don't. I'm just gonna do some cleaning here. And that's about it.